It was a beautiful day. July the 30th, 2015. There were three adults and four children. My son was there, my grandson out for a beautiful day of fishing. And about five and a half hours later, it turned to a nightmare. Six o'clock, we hit the storm head on. It was a nightmare out there. It just turned completely black. Like black as night. 14 to 16 foot waves. You can imagine looking up 16 feet and seeing waves crash, crashing over the top of your boat. We were getting hammered pretty, pretty bad. We knew that if we didn't get help, we may never see each other again. I received a call that there was a boat that was taking on water. Roger, they were fearing that the boat was going to sink and that all seven of them were going to have to enter the water. I have two children on my own, and uh, the first thing I did was I. I put my two children on, on that boat. My, my heart rate went up. We started flying in that direction. We were going to be the second one uh, to show up on scene, and it was about 90 miles to get to the vessel. We had to dodge several thunderstorms to get through there and actually had to fly through a couple of them to get there on time. So it was very challenging and quite dangerous flying. Even though I had that fear of the thunderstorms and the lightning that was around us, the training takes over. Finally, we picked up a very faint uh, response, but we still didn't know exactly where they were. We asked the captain if he could fire off a red flare, and immediately off the nose of our aircraft, we saw the red flare, and at that point, we knew that uh, we had found them. You know, hey, God was there, and, and uh, they were, somebody was there to save us. High winds, uh, real high seas, the boat was bouncing around. We were reaching a, what we call a critical fuel state, meaning that we were getting low on gas. So we had to make the, the quick decision to uh, depart scene to go get gas. We knew that we had another aircraft that was right behind us, and we were able to pass them the location of the boat. That was an extremely hard decision. When they leave, 30 minutes seemed like 30 days. The, the second helicopter reached us, and uh, of course by then we'd been battered pretty, pretty bad. We arrived on scene. Uh, we could see, clearly see the back of the vessel. We could see the grandfather kind of setting off to the side. Didn't look like he was doing very well. He was throwing up. He was nauseated. He thought he might have a heart attack. I was serving as the rescue swimmer on board the second helicopter. We had enough fuel to safely hoist me down in the boat, which was pitching violently, 90 degree rolls. And there was, it was a small target. They had to put me on the boat. The biggest challenge I faced during the hoist was not being able to make out the horizon to use as a reference point to maintain a stable hover. Uh, as we combine that with the fact that one of our automatic flight control systems was malfunctioning and normally holds our heading for, so I had to work a little bit harder to maintain that. I've been a rescue swimmer for a little over six years, and this was definitely the worst weather I've ever been part of on a search and rescue case. I was definitely on my toes when I was going down to that vessel, but we needed to get down there and safely get this guy off see this guy, it's like the savior from heaven drops onto your boat, and you know that, that you're saved. And so they bring down this little basket, and he tells you to get in and hold on. Of course, you're not going to let go. And he throws you clear of the boat. And let me tell you what, it's nothing like Baywatch. You look down, and you see your son and your grandson left behind. You know, it's, it's emotional, you know. That's three generations that could have been lost right there. Once we got him inside the cabin, we realized that we did not have enough fuel to recover the rescue swimmer. I had to stay on the boat, kind of look after the safety of the children and the two adults on board in case the boat sank. We just felt like we were relieved, like if we were, this boat was to sink by now, that we have somebody on this boat who knows what they're doing and we should all live. And luckily a good Samaritan on a tanker heard our call for help, so we followed him all the way to the port. The Coast Guard saved the lives of my son, myself, and my grandson. If they hadn't have made it there, I truly believe we may not be here today. How y'all doing, guys? I got one order. My wife told me to give y'all all a hug. I don't even think there's words that can describe what these guys did that day. You can see and how prepared they were, how professional they were. A group of men put their lives in danger to come out and save here. Y'all save three generations out there. No, we try. Anytime you get a chance to save somebody's life, that's great. You know, that's that's why I joined the Coast Guard and that's why I became a rescue swimmer. Being able to save lives with a skill that I have, it's a, a tremendous feeling. They wouldn't have came, probably 
Probably wouldn't be here today. <laughs> I love you guys. I can't, I can't tell you what. Uh, seeing both the grandfather and the grandson today is, is relief. And uh, we're just very glad to meet somebody that we're able to help on their probably worst day. Without y'all, my family wouldn't be here today. Anytime.